Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Happy Thursday for those that are here live. Oh, it's so good to be back here in this space. You know, whenever you're on the road, it's like a whole nother world to get the show going. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Love doing it. And I'm and I thank those that are with us consistently. You make it all worth it. But even wherever you go and you sit, you got to make sure the Wi-Fi is working and the computer that you get and you hold, and then finally you sit down. It's a different feel. So I'm happy to be back. Happy with you. Uh, we've been talking about this idea of energy, spiritual energy. And it's so important. And the reason why it's so important is because it's a resource that we're going to realize that we didn't use at the level that we were given it. And this is a, if we look around and we ask ourselves, you know, what is it that creates this feeling called regret? When do we regret things in life? We've circled through this before in the show. And if you ever, anyone ever played sports, you know that the games that you lose by one point, you regret. But the games that you get blown out, you don't. You think about them. Had I just made that basket? Had I just played a little harder defense? Had I just been focused in the, in the second quarter? I would have gotten an easy basket here, made some points here, and then at the end, it would have affected. We constantly are in this game of thinking about things that we could have done. And as you get closer to the goal, it becomes more painful because you know you could have. Whereas if you walk onto a court or a field and you get blown out, you sort of move on. Life is very much like that. That when you go through it, you don't really have a proper perception of what you can and can't do. And then life throws you stuff, or to say it more accurately, God throws you stuff. And along the way, you start learning. I really could have done that. I could do that. I had no idea I could do that. You get into a new job. You're like, I can't do this. You have a family circumstance. You're like, I can't do this. And then in many ways, in some cases, you have no choice. You get through it. And then you look back if you're introspective and say, I had no idea I could have done that. And what that needs to indicate to us is we have no idea what we can do. Like we have no clue. We have no idea. We have no perception of the extent of our capacity, which in itself is a realization that we need to walk around with. Just knowing that there is nothing that we have that is a proper indication of the extent of what's inside us is in itself, I think, a major accomplishment. If we do nothing else today than just get that in our heads, I think that's a huge win. And our brain's going to be like, what are you, crazy? You're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. Don't you think you know yourself? The answer is no, you don't. And if you need proof, go back two generations from me. And look at people. Or go, go back in history. Go back to this generation. You see people becoming immigrants in new towns in their in the mid in their sixties in their sixties and fifties and sixties, and they take they create a whole new life in a new country. There are people that change their their world, their lives, and and they never thought they could have done something that they for 50, 60, 70 years couldn't do. It was it easier when you're younger? Yeah. Only because you get less of that block, but it doesn't change your soul. You know, we did the stat over here how I saw this years ago, years ago, maybe months, but years ago, probably years by now, maybe like two, three years ago, I saw the stat of where the highest group of entrepreneurs that are successful are people that change, they become entrepreneurs in their 50s. Because you get years of experience. In many cases, if you're in your 50s, you may even have a different level of expenses than you had if you were in your teenage years, or, or well, not in your teenage years. That almost never happens. That's just like once in a while you get that on like a cover somewhere, but it's not real. 
20s, 30s. But it's more dramatic to say 20s and 30s to be an entrepreneur. Later in life, there's like this, it's like cooler to like be nimble when you're young. It's more accepted to be more straight when you're older. Come on. If you look in the Bible, you see that every single major character achieved almost all of his or her goals later in their lives. Now, of course, they were us. They're superhuman beings, but still. The ability for us to understand that we have no clue just how powerful we are, that recognition, just saying, I don't know. No, I, I actually don't know. You want to take this pet task on? Can you do it? I don't know. Those three words, like who wants to say that? I don't know. You ever talk to someone and they say, what do you think? And they say, I don't know. Never. <laughs> Everyone knows everything. But, but also depending on what country you're in. Everybody, especially in Israel. I love Israel, as you can tell. Israel's is the state, is the Jewish state. So everybody knows everything, you know? Would you love that? You know, the famous quote of gold in the ear. The guy knows this is one of the great quotes of all time. For those who are from Israel, you'll appreciate this, but gold in the ear once was sitting, I forgot which with president, but it was the president of the United States. And they were negotiating some, um, something that had to be sold to both countries. And the then president of the United States said to him, you know, Ms., you know, Prime Minister Mayor, I, I, with all due respect, I know it's going to be hard to sell this to the Israelis, but I am the president of, you know, over 100 million Americans. And Golden Ray says, with all due respect, Mr. President, I am the Prime Minister of 5 million Prime Ministers, right? Like, do me a favor. This, we, we all have opinions, right? We all think we know. We all think we know. You sit around a table, like everybody knows everything. Everyone could do everyone's job better. We like feeling like we know. We like feeling like, you know, we're holding in the elections and we all like feeling like we're policymakers. You're like, you ever listen to people speak about politics? It's, it's really, in some ways, it's, it, it can get comical. Like they pick up like a quote from like this news and they they look at some, you know, uh, headlines on the way home from work. They hear like a line and like they put these pieces together and now like they're like a congressman. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you look at like news outlets, they don't even like give you stories because you don't, they just give you like highlights and bullet points and, you know, it's all sort of like masked in whatever agenda and like everybody thinks they know. It's fun to think, you know. In sports, it's fun to play GM and think you know the picks. In po everyone, even like today, when someone has an ache or a pain, you feel like they don't even wait to go ask the doctor because if I could just Google it, I can put the pieces together myself. Now, I want you to contrast that with me and my my opinion that you shouldn't be following rules, right? So there's two pieces of me, and I, and for those who have been long enough, you can find a way to put those two worlds together. The I don't know, listen to someone who knows this for a living versus the don't listen to anybody. And both of those are right in their own way. But this whole world of this obsession that we have with knowing, that's why people have such a hard time with God. You know why they have such a hard time with God? Because they need to know it. And they can't handle the fact that there's something that they don't know. Like they can't put their head around the Holocaust and God's existence. And they're like, well, I don't get it. He should have swooped in and said, like, if I don't get it, then he must not be here. So, because if I don't get him, he must not exist. It's the concept that like, if you don't understand God and his ways, then he must not exist. Like you speak to people like this. But why did this happen, huh? You're like, why do you, why do we think we need to know all this? Because the word I don't know is so hard for us to digest. It's hard for us to not know something. 
it's hard for us to not even figure out why it's it's healthy it's a it's an important desire in life there's nothing wrong with it we should know we should figure stuff out that's why we're here and when you try to figure stuff out you make stuff Right. And, you know, let's go back to Israel, like five. And, and, and by the way, for those who live in Israel, I think you'll say this is true. You're living with five minute, five million prime ministers. That's cool. That's why you keep on making stuff. That's why it's the Silicon Wadi. That's why like, every day they're like, there's like 40 new inventions coming. out. It, it's fine. It's healthy. Keep on doing it. But just recognize it. And I'm in the same boat. And so I'm sure are you. And I'm sure I'm sure everybody, you know. The world, I the word I don't know, just bothers us to no end. That's okay. But let me tell you where it's not okay. When you think you know who you are. And you think you know what you can do. Because the minute you think you know who you are, you are now blocking off all the things that you can possibly be. The minute we stick our brain and create a limit to what we can become, what we're doing is saying the energy that I feel or the energy that I know historically I have brought to something is what I have. I know the size of my tank and it's this big. So I know what I have because I can either sense it I feel tired or I'm not in the mood or this doesn't speak to me or I don't feel like I can, or I go to my neuroplastic computer brain and it starts to do a Google search for when have you ever had more energy and it pulls up zero results. And I go, hmm, hold on, let me go back into my brain in my, by the way, totally limited memory, which remembers very little compared to what I've experienced. What I can pull into my memory versus what I've experienced in my life is tiny, but okay. Oh, let me look. Hmm. No, yeah, I don't have any real recollections of having more energy or strength to do this thing. I can't. I've fallen and I can't get up. Tonight on the Shabbat show, we're doing, for those who will be tuning in, we're doing addiction talking to people and what it's like to overcome something that was almost always a challenge that they've never experienced before. I can't do that. That's too much. That's beyond me. The minute you find yourself saying that you know yourself, you know you're out. That is super hard super hard because there is we do have clues along the way we do learn that we are good at things better than others and we do learn that we have certain traits and self-awareness is an incredible value and it's hard to balance between knowing the stuff that is productive about us along the way knowing our deficiencies so that we can join with other people put better people around us, knowing the things that I can naturally incline towards so that I can do more of that. Those are all great clues in the path and knowing how to balance that with the energy that I have to expend towards things. The, the knowledge that I can learn, the skills that I didn't realize that I could have developed. To have a little bit of knowledge, but to still say, I don't really know. That's really, really hard. And that's been the struggle of the leader throughout time. And my humble little knowledge of the interaction of those is much deeper than I could have dreamed of between Moses and God. Moses turns to God and goes, I don't know if you got the right guy. Of course, at his level. God's like, yeah, you can. That struggle of you have no idea what you got inside you. you. No, no, Moses, you have no idea. Like, I don't know who you think you are, but let me tell you something. You got a lot in there. Trust me. You're going to make for a killer leader. 
And Moses having the humility to say, I guess I don't know. I don't know. And when we face things that come our way, and we look at that thing from a place of, I don't know. And maybe this thing, as challenging as it is, will bring out a piece of me that never would have came out in life but for this. And when we have the idea to try something and that thought comes into our head, you can't do this. You can't do that. Are you kidding me? Do you know how old you are? You don't do these things. You've never done this thing. That piece goes, I don't know, maybe I can. And when we go into our days and we look at the energy barometer that we've created on this, together, at least on this show, the dial, if you will, the one to a hundred. And we look at our lives and go, no, I'm a consistent 25% energy guy. I, I, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm not that woman. I'm just not. I don't have that energy. It takes me two hours to like get, to ramp up. I need 40 liters of coffee just to get me to like really walk down. No, no, I'm not that person. I know someone like that. You know, I don't mean physical manifestations. I don't mean you have to be like hip, hip, hooray on the outside. We're talking about inner work here. There's some people that are at a hundred energy that aren't yelling and screaming from the rooftops. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the internal thermometer. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that person. I don't infuse that much energy into the things that I'm doing. I don't have that much. All this stuff is just these thoughts that are there to say, stay safe, stay comfortable, stay the same. You see what you felt yesterday? Here's what I want you to do. Feel what you felt yesterday, today, and then we'll know that we're okay. And your soul is saying to you, are you joking me? Are you kidding me? You got one life, my friend. You got a body. How many years do you think you got with that body's working in the way you want? How many, think you, how many, think, how many years do you think you got with this body? You got an infinite soul. Go drive this car. You got a Ferrari inside you. Step on the gas. You can go more than 45 miles an hour. You can even go more than 80. You got a Ferrari, open road, no speed limit. Now you got to know how to use it. Don't do things that are dumb. But do you know how much you got inside you? You don't even know. Once we see life, and I'm, by the way, the same way. I have no idea either. No one should think like, oh, Charlie knows. I don't know. But once we see life as the process of extracting the greatness from within us to without us, now we're living a different life. Once we see our days as the mechanism of which I reach into my energy source called my soul and I extract out all of it. Now we're talking. I force myself to move up 10 degrees of energy because I have a day and I'm not wasting that time if I can't see just how much I got because I'm never going to know until I try. I'm never going to feel my energy source. I'm never going to understand the divineness of my soul. I'm never going to appreciate the gift that God gave me, which is a piece of him, until I bring it out into this world. And so whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm forcing the dial up, and I'm going to use more energy today. I, how else am I going to know? When the challenge comes before me, my answer is, this is another path in which I can bring my energy out. 
I don't want to be in pain. I don't want to be suffering. I want to bring the, the me inside to the outside world. When an idea or an opportunity comes before me and my brain goes, go back to sleep. I say, go back to sleep. I got only a couple more years left in this world. How much more years do I got? 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, a hundred years left. That's not a lot of time. There's a challenge right now. I got an opportunity to use this world, this matrix to extract out that which is inside me. I, I don't know. I want to see how much I got inside me. I want to see how fast this car goes. That's how little kids live. That's how adults should live too. The heart of a child. But the mind of an adult. All right. Let's keep doing this. If you haven't until now, try it. Look at your day. Look at what you're doing. Give yourself an energy score, one to a hundred, and then force 10 more degrees. The next challenge that comes your way, look at it, take a deep breath and say, this is going to enable me to pull out a piece of me that would never have come out but this challenge and engage in it. Start, let's start driving the car. Pedal on the metal. All right, everybody. Have an awesome day. And with God's help, I cannot wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day.